These are the Nanopatch X and Nanopatch M, two tiny tabletop patch bays from DF Audio. They're designed to make it quick and easy to connect different instruments to different effects, reduce cable clutter in your setup, and encourage on-the-fly experimentation with signal routings. In this video, I'll show you how they work using common use case examples, and I'll also share some handy patching tips and tricks. Let's start with a closer look at the Nanopatch X. Basically, you have four quarter-inch TRS sockets on the back, each of which break out into two mono jack sockets on the top panel. By using insert cables, which have a TRS plug on one end and two TS plugs on the other end, we can connect up to four effects pedals and get easy access to all the inputs and outputs on the top panel here. We'll hook up this delay pedal as an example. So we plug the TRS end into the Nanopatch X, one TS end into the input of the pedal and the other into the output. Now I've got the input and the output of the pedal on these two sockets here. I like to have the input on the top and the output on the bottom, but we could switch that around just by swapping these TS plugs. If you want to hook up a pedal in stereo, you just duplicate what we've done here for the right channel. Okay, so what do we do with this? Well, to use it like you would a typical patch bay, we need to bring in the Nano Patch M, and I'll show you that in a moment. But before that, I just want to quickly share a little patching shortcut that can be useful for setups that have a lot of mini jack connections. Here I've got a Volker bass and a little mixer with mini jack inputs. So I can go straight from the Volker to the mixer. And if I want to hook into that delay, I can just go in, grab a patch cable, and take that back to the mixer. This is really handy for relatively simple setups, but it can get a bit messy if you're doing a lot of patching. And that's where the Nano Patch M comes in. So this one's primarily designed to connect your instruments and a mixer. It has six mini jack sockets on the back, as well as two more on the side, and the eight sockets on the top panel for patching. It also has normaling switches, so we can have signals flow from instruments through to the mixer without needing to be patched. Let's connect some things to see how it works. So I've got a Volker FM and a little mixer. If I take a stereo cable from the FM and plug it into sockets 1 and 2 on the back of the Nano Patch M, we'll be able to access the left and right channels from patch points 1 and 2 on the top. You'll also notice these lines that go from 1 and 2 to 5 and 6. These show the normal connections that are made when nothing's plugged into the top panel. I'm going to take another stereo cable and go from socket 5, 6 on the back to channel 1 on the mixer and I'll make that channel stereo. If you're listening on headphones, you can hear that's coming through both left and right channels. Cool. But if I plug a cable into socket two on the back of the Nano Patch M, you can hear that the right channel cuts out. This is so we can use sockets one and two for two separate mono channels. So let's plug this into the Volker bass. And you can hear that coming through the right channel only, and we don't want that. So we've got two options here. One is to grab another cable and go from socket six on the side to channel two on the mixer and make sure that both channels are mono. Now we've got the Volker FM coming through channel one and the bass through channel two. The other option is to get rid of these two cables and use one of these instead, which is essentially an insert cable with a mini TRS plug. Just plug it into socket 5, 6 on the back of the Nano Patch M and into channels 1 and 2 on the mixer. Volker FM, Volker Bass. At this point, I'm going to put some tape on our patch base so we can label what's what. I'll also hook up a phaser pedal so we've got a bit more to work with. Now, if we want to patch either of these instruments into an effect, we just go from the instrument output over to the effect input, then from the effect output to the mixer input. And there we have the bass going through the phaser. If we want to send it through the delay as well, we can easily do that. Okay, so that's the basic idea of how the Nano Patch X and M work together. Now I want to show you some more advanced tips and tricks. So, we've got a compressor and a reverb connected to the Nano Patch X, and a Volker sample connected to the Nano Patch M. I've used a stereo cable to go from the sample into socket 3, 4 on the back, which means that patch points 3 and 4 on the top panel correspond to the left and right channels of the sample. If we follow the lines down, we can see that 3 and 4 are normal to 7 and 8. 
We've got a cable going from socket 7, 8 on the back to the mixer. However, this cable is mono and I've got the channel set to mono as well. So we're only hearing the left channel of the sample, but we have access to the right channel via this patch point here. Okay, time for trick number one. Let's start by taking a listen to a simple groove that we're going to work with. So we're going to create some punch by getting the bass to duck around the kick using our compressor. To do this, I've panned all the drum parts on the sample hard left, except for the kick which is in the center. This means that from patch point 4, we'll only hear the kick. This cable is connected to the sidechain input of the compressor, so we'll plug that in here to get our kick as the trigger. Now we just need to patch the bass into the main input and output of the compressor. With the compressor off, and on. Okay, so that's the compressor trick. Now I want to show you another way we can use these separate left and right patch points of the Volca sample. We're going to first pan the kick all the way to the left, and then we'll take the right channel into the reverb. By doing this, we're essentially turning the pan control on the sample into a reverb send. We could give the reverb its own channel on the main mixer, but I'm going to use this little passive mixer to first combine the wet and dry signals so that we're only using one channel on the main mixer. So we take the left channel of the sample, which is the dry signal, along with the output of the reverb, and there it is. Now I want to talk about stereo signals. I mentioned earlier that to work in stereo, we basically need to duplicate our routing to accommodate the left and right channels. But this means that we could only fit two stereo effects into a single nano patch X. So something larger like the Mini Bay version 2 would be more ideal for a full stereo setup. That said, there is a nice little hack to efficiently incorporate stereo effects into a tiny patching system like we've got here. This Zoom MS70 CDR has left and right inputs and outputs, but as is the case with most stereo effects pedals, we're also able to put a mono signal in and get a stereo signal out. Now we've still got one unused channel in our setup, number 8, with the patch point here and corresponding socket on the side. So let's take a mono cable from there to the input of the Zoom, and then use a stereo cable to go straight from the Zoom to the mixer. Now we've got the zoom pedal on its own channel, and we can patch in any instrument with a single cable. The only caveat is that it's always going to be at the end of the signal chain, but that's generally not a problem for reverbs and multi-effects processors. Finally in this video, I want to mention that these patch bays can also be used to route CV signals. In most cases, the nano patch M is probably more ideal, as you've got 8 sockets on the back and side that correspond to the 8 patch points on the top. If you have something like an MPC which sends out two CV signals over a single TRS socket, then you can either use the X or M to break them out into pairs of mono sockets. Just keep in mind that the position of the breakouts on the top panel will be different for the X and the M. Alright, so that pretty much wraps it up for the Nano Patch X and M from DF Audio. If you're in Europe, the US or the UK, they should be available from a retailer within your region, otherwise they can be purchased directly from the DF Audio website. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.